Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is CJ. I'm going to welcome you guys back to episode 6 of my brand new 120 gallon reef system. Now, if you guys have been following this bill, you know it's been on pause for about, you know, three or four weeks. Honestly, guys, something called life got in the way, to make a long story short. But, we're finally back on track. So, in this vid, I'm basically going through, doing my last inspections, my last, you know, adjustments, if you want to call it that, while the tank's empty before we add the rock and water and you know get this build finally cycling and moving towards becoming a reef tank. So let's go ahead and get to it. So the first order of business was shortening the lock lines for my dual returns. Now I found that without the tool, I had to do a little improvising, but a one inch piece of PVC gave me the perfect leverage to pop these things loose. And of course, pushing them together takes a little force, but it's definitely doable. My main reason for doing this was all about flood and back siphoning control. Just think about it. If I was to accidentally knock this down into the water with a shorter lock line, there's no way possible to go any more than maybe an inch below the overflow. That's exactly what I wanted. Now one mistake I did make while doing this is I accidentally broke my damn overflow box. Now the only good news about this is that it's a double overflow. So there's an outer and an inner overflow. The inner overflow is glass and that's the one that actually dictates the water level. My main concern is gonna be, you know, fish accidentally going over that. So I may patch this with some weld on or, you know, glue it back on later. So the second change I made was switching the standpipe colors from blue to black. The hope is for it to blend in a little better. And I also added these screens. Now screens are important because it's gonna keep any fish or snails from getting down into my drains. And I made sure nothing is glued so I can remove the standpipes if I need to you know, cleaning the detritus or make any adjustments or any changes to this area. So all in all, turned out pretty good. When I test filled the tank a few weeks ago, I found out I had a slight lean from left to right. I had to make sure I rectified this before I did the final fill up. So the best way to do it was these composite shims, half wood, half plastic, you know, water resistant and definitely should hold up over time. The only surprise was how many I had to use. I actually had to stack three of them on top of each other to get the right height. And I wanted to spread them out three inches apart so that way the load was spread across them evenly. And I left a little hanging out, you know, to make minor adjustment later down the road whenever I finally filled the tank. So at this point, the mission has been accomplished. Everything's level on the right side of the tank, the front, and the left side. So all in all, we're good to go. So let's keep it moving. Now, it seems like the longer this tank is empty, the more, you know, I look at it and stare at it and come up with new ways to try to improve it or to solve a problem I may have later down the road. So what better time to make a manifold adjustment than before I put salt water into the tank? Now, for anyone new to my channel, highly recommend you go back and check out episode four of the series, do a full explanation and breakdown of my plumbing, you know, my Herbie style drain and manifold install, everything you want to know. But for now, I just want to stress the unions, guys. The use of unions on my system has definitely made a huge difference. Made it really easy to remove the end cap off the manifold. You know, install my extension that I created. I basically reduced it down to half inch PVC so it would fit underneath the drain that's already there and extend all the way over to the left chamber or the first chamber of my sump. As you can tell, install is really easy. Just unscrew and screw it back on. So let me give you a quick idea of how it's gonna work. The return pump still feeds the main display, the manifold, reactor, algae scrubber, and now it also feeds the first chamber. Now I reduced it, so it should give me a stronger jet of water. And the main reason for it, when I test filled the tank, the Herbie drain just was not reaching the bottom of this chamber enough, and I knew I was gonna have detritus build up later than the road. So I figured, hey, I got a strong pump, why not plumb it? and have it take care of the problem for me and keep it maintenance free. Now in the spirit of always trying to plan ahead, I did make sure that I use a true union ball valve. You know, for now it's gonna let me restrict flow, but for later, I can easily plumb in and extend this to go to a UV sterilizer or, you know, external display refugium or second tank or honestly, whatever I wanted to do. The point is the plumbing's there and ready to go. You know, it's crazy how one manifold extension can improve your sump's efficiency so much all of the water from my display is now gonna recycle through my sump multiple times, have multiple opportunities to hit my skimmer, algae scrubber, you know, reactor, before it goes back to the display. So what this is gonna do is not limit me the amount of turnover that I can go from my display to my sump, or vice versa. You know, not to mention maintenance day, 
closing off the main return and just having the water cycle through my sump over and over through the filter floss and cleaning it that way. I mean, the possibilities are endless and I'm glad I decided to do this extension. So that's pretty much gonna cover all of the last changes I needed to make, you know, before filling the tank, at least what's inside of the tank. You know, on the outside of the tank, still cosmetic things I'm gonna change, whether it be that vent to the right, that's gonna be replaced. Um, the power cord management on the left, that's gonna be handled, but those things are not, you know, dependent on the tank being empty, so I can get those done later down the road. But other than that, this is a good stopping point, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And as always, hey, you guys like, comment, subscribe. You guys do what y'all do. Y'all be easy. Happy reefing.